Okay. I believe we are recording. Let me just double check that. Yes, we're recording. So, welcome to class tonight. <clears throat> sure. And we're starting on slide 443. We've basically finished the whole course now on all of the calendars, and especially the start calendar, which we've taken quite a bit of time on. Because <clears throat> it's really complicated, and the main complication is every, every star represents a day. I mean, every day is represented by a star with a name and a meaning and actually even a person. Whereas, so in a way, they're almost all holy, whereas the other calendars just have a few holy days in the year. So it's taken quite a while to get through that. Is, is, is it possible that there are lots more stars for lots more people? I don't know. I don't have any evidence of more than 364, because that's what it says in the Book of Enoch. He, okay. He says, there's, he says there's four big ones, and there's four leaders. I mean, I'm sorry, 12 leaders, each of 30. For three, so 12, there's 12 captains of, of 30, which is the 360, and then there's four big ones, and we've studied. We didn't do all the captains, because I don't know them, but, well, well, they were the leads, I believe they're the lead stars of each of the 12 constellations. And uh, that's one reason the lead star of a constellation needs to be in the zodiac constellation. That was a question I had, and we might not have even said that. <clears throat> With that in mind, let's, uh, this tonight, in the class up till now, I've done almost no LDS Mormon stuff. It's been, the target audience has been more Bible and there's been plenty to do in the Old Testament. And I haven't done much dating in the Book of Mormon. So I've only mentioned Joseph Smith two or three times. Now we're going to look at several dates in the restoration in the time of Joseph Smith. And I'm going to try to go through this as fast as I can because there's really quite a few slides. So... In the prophecy of of uh, jo Jacob on his son Joseph in Genesis 49, an archer is referred to who draws the bow. And Joseph Smith was born on 1 to Beth, which is the first day of winter. By the way, he's one of the big four. Uh, the four directions and the four seasons, and he's Mr. Winter. Uh, he's the he's the winter guy. I mean that. So that's his big thing. He's one of he's one of the four, I believe, and his birthday indicates it. It's not the solstice on our calendar, but it's the solstice on the Hebrew calendar. It's the winter fast on the uniform Enoch calendar, but the star that goes with it is called the archer. <coughs> it's the tenth day of Sagittarius. And I don't have this in blue, but since this slide was made, I'm pretty sure this is a holy day. Xi is in the head of Sagittarius, and that's why, because it's in the head, it gets named for the entire constellation. So the star's name is the archer as well as the constellation. And then on the uniform star calendar, he's, he's the spear in the side of the sea goat, which is sacrificed. It's, it's, the, it's Christ. There were two. Oh, I can spend a long time on these slides. Uh, there were two sacrifices made every day in the every day, not just. Sat Passover every day in the temple, in the law of Moses. There's a morning and an afternoon sacrifice. The morning sacrifice is in the middle of a day that starts in the evening, and it represent it's a lamb, and it represented Christ, I believe. 
Who is the afternoon toward the end of the day, meaning the end of time? See, Christ comes in the meridian of time. Who comes toward the end of time? It's Joseph Smith, and he was sacrificed like a lamb to the slaughter. And Christ was sacrificed by a spear on his side. Oh, and it's interesting. They don't say spear. Remember they say, look on him whom you have pierced. Well, Joseph Smith was also pierced the, with a bullet. So they use this clever language that has double meanings. That's enough time on this slide, but it's amazing. Look at all those things. Joseph Smith, he's the man. Okay, slide 444. We've already seen before his vision of the Father and the Son. It was on New Year's day in a year called new year we i believe we've talked about that that's the sunday the 26th of march it was also passover uh on the star calendar so it's it was a passover date 15 pisces and on the uniform it's 15 taurus the seer and that's who he is he's the seer and his whole constellation he has everything to do with taurus the bull, and his, one, I believe, one of his stars. I'm not, let's just say, one of the big four stars is the seer. It's Alpha Taurus. It's Aldebaran. And he's one of the big four people. I believe that's his star. So he's not born on his star, but the first vision's on his star. So, again, it's all over the place. 445 slide. <clears throat> on the 21st of September, 1823, when the angel told Joseph about a sacred record that he would translate into the Book of Mormon, that day was the Feast yeah, of Tabernacles. He, he, the day he picks up the plates will be trumpets. I thought it might be a mistake, but no. It's the Feast of Tabernacles on the P, the uh, uh, perpetual Hebrew calendar. This is a date. We're in a time period where the perpetual really differs from the regular Hebrew calendar. It differs by as much as three days. And at first I just thought that was wrong, but I'm finding out the meaning. The, the later the day is, the higher the most holy it is. So this is not only tabernacles, it's a very holy tabernacles. And we're still in that very holy time. Anyway, that's, that's, that's all beyond the scope of the class stuff. Um, the point is the day the angel first comes is a holy day. Then four years later, it's trumpets. And this has been noticed by everybody because that's on the regular Hebrew calendar. There was a big article in the Ensign on this by Lynette Reed uh, 15 years ago. Um, <clears throat> he's given the plates on the Feast of Trumpets on the regular and the corrected Hebrew calendar. It's on the fall equinox on the uh, Enoch calendar. But on the star calendar, it's visionary. That's the day for a seer. That visionary is, is Rastavan. The eye of the dragon. It's the day on which Enoch is born. Uh, it's a seer day, 21 Scorpio. Uh, he was given the record to be translated. Slide 446, Joseph decided to lend his scribe the first translated pages on a day. And we know the day because his son was born the next day and died. And that was recorded. And I think he would... Joseph Smith's not really good with dates. I mean, it's not a big deal to him. But this is a date he actually records in the church history, and I think he remembered it because it was the day before his son died uh, on the 15th. Anyway, he, he gives the scribe, that date's recorded in church history. I didn't just make that one up. Uh, just, I didn't discover that one. And it's the first day of summer on the... See, it's near the spring equinox. It's summer on the Hebrew calendar. 
it's uh, it's a decision day on the uniform Hebrew calendar, and it's first fruits on the Jubilee calendar. This shows how these different days tell a story. The first fruits, it's the first fruit of, of his translation. And it's a decision because he had to pray three times in order to give the stuff to to uh, make the decision to give it to Martin Harris. And it's on the beginning of summer. And it's on Lambda Argo. That is another, I believe, that's a decision day. Argo are all the bad stars. That's the one down in hell. Um, and most of these stars are decision days on the uniform. I just didn't have time to. Well, I don't have it in blue. <coughs> it's a star in Argo, which is a bad, bad omen. It's like a decision that's going to lead you in a bad place. Uh, 447. Later on, the scribe confessed to losing the translated uh, pages, and he he uh, tr he made that confession on a decision day. On on the worst anguish day, thirteen dog dog is anguish and suffering. Zero death is not a good. That's death, and the summer fast. Now the summer fast, kappa. I guess and see that's um, that's in blue. That's the that's the holy fast day in the summer. Uh, the, but the fast day is the day of the result of your decision. So even though it's a decision day on one calendar, on this star calendar, it's this is the day that you get the results of your decision that you made before, and the results are anguish. So these are amazing things. This is all, I, won't, I try to, that's why I do this. This is all amazing. Okay. Uh, now we're going to talk about when the Lord restored Joseph's gift to translate. That day is also, re, I believe, recorded. It's recorded close enough, uh, not to the exact day, but Mars, which is a priesthood uh, planet, goes into what's called retrograde motion. And it began its retrograde motion on one adult Mars, which was 14th of June. The slide we just saw was 14th of June. Let's just go back and look at that quick, the last slide. Oh, oh, that's the confession. Let's go back two slides. Saturday, 14th of June. That's when Joseph decided to give the plates, the uh, translation to him. That is the day that Mars begins to regress and go backwards, which is not good. There wasn't room for that on, well, I, I put it here on that slide. That's even another lineup for, for that. Mars goes backwards for a certain number of 78 days, as I recall. And 78 days later, uh, is Saturday the 3rd, 30th of August, and that's rebirth when you start going forward again. You've repented from your stupidity, and from all I know, Joseph Smith never made that mistake again of going against the Lord's counsel because he repeated, you know, because like a little kid asking mommy to change your mind, um, it could often get you in trouble. So, the day that it all changed was rebirth on Mars, trumpets, which is a starting a new era. One creation on Mercury is starting a new era. And this is the Holy Sun on the day of the stars. And that's when he got his gift to translate back. And I just reviewed how he, he had lost it when he had lost it. So again, uh, amazing stuff up there in the stars. Uh, hopefully, these, this slide makes it worth your time in going through and having learned everything. This is the frosting on the cake. This is the dessert. So I'm hoping um, I'm hoping people like this um, because if you don't like this, then <laughs> yeah, anyway, then, then you're near something's. I'm amazed by it. 
Okay, 15th of February, 1829. The Lord tells Joseph, the field is white, ready to harvest. A much quoted uh, revelation from DNC4. Guess what? What field is white, ready to harvest? What day does that happen on? It happens on the beginning of the grain harvest uh, on the Ju on Uniform Jubilee calendar. And this, this scripture has kind of baffled me because we're actually workers in the vineyard. The, the, har the grain harvesters were the apostles at the time of Christ, but we're in the age of the vineyard now. And I, would, I was expecting this to say, you are, you are harvesting the grapes. You're workers in my vineyard. So I thought the Lord got mixed up here. <laughs> I, I do things like that. When, I, when he says the field is white, ready to harvest. And then I find out, oh, it's grain harvest day on the Jubilee calendar. And DNC 4 says, he that thrusteth in his sickle with his might, the same bringeth salvation to his soul. On all of the calendars, look how many holy days it was. New Year's on the Enoch, one grass, sacred round, one grass. Does this look like grass? One grass, sacred round. Zero resurrection on Mars, one prime on Mercury, one king on the priest, Easter on the uniform jubilee. Oh, yeah, begin grain harvest, Easter, that's also Easter. Uh, see, that's when they began the harvest, on after res Christ resurrected. That's when the church really starts and you begin the harvest. So that's the same. Anyway, all of these, oh, and Risen Ram is, is like Easter on the uniform star calendar. So uh, that one little revelation was on an amazing day. Now, we learned in our class about the Venus creation pattern, and we saw how that when the Lord, the Lord and the angels came to Abraham and told him about his son Jake Isaac would be born, uh, they came on the day that a project was announced. He was conceived at the Begin Project, and he was born when the project is finished. That's happened two or three times in history. Here's one in modern times. Uh, there is a project called, we're going to have three witnesses. Oh, I, I, I'll show that in the next slide. I think I take two slides to show that. Uh, yeah, I take two slides. So this is just reminding you of the pattern. You announce the project, begin the project, finish the project. Okay, and we reviewed Isaac's birth. Now let's look at the project. Slide 451. The three witnesses for the Book of Mormon were provided by the Lord. There was a day he announced the witnesses. It's way back, 26th of March, 1829. This is like section five of the Doctrine and Covenants, where Martin Harris asks if he can have a view of the plates. And the Lord says, if you're a good boy, yes, you can. That's actually announcing the witnesses. It's not, he never gets a view just because he's a buddy of Joseph's. That's the announcement. Then the witness actually occurs, which is, you could say, the, begin, the beginning of the actual project, is on the 25th of June, 1829. We only know that date from church history to within a few days, but from this pattern, it's really clear. It's, it's one birth. I mean, it's following this pattern. And this date we know exactly. This is when the Book of Mormon is published with his witness in it. The church uses Friday the 26th of March because that's when the newspaper came out saying it's already on sale. But all the evidence from the Venus the calendars, the Venus calendar, is that the Book of Mormon's publication date was the day before, Thursday the 25th of March on one resurrection. That's also the publication of his witness. So isn't that cool? This Venus pattern is used in modern LDS times. Um, okay, 452. Uh, this is where the four angels the angel shows the three witnesses the date, and it's one wind on the sacred round. It's holy on several calendars, and we just saw that it was one birth on Venus, so that's not new since the last slide. <clears throat> and I said it's the part of the three-step creation pattern. 
and it's in a holy year called consecration on the Enoch calendar. Now, uh, later on, on Tuesday the 7th of April, a new scribe, Oliver, began for Joseph's translation. And the day he begins, and they give that date. You, that's a date that many of you listening probably already have memorized. The, the, on, on the, anyway, 7th of April, 1829, Oliver started to translate after Martin was released. And the day he shows up, New Year on, see, and this is really late for New Year. On 7th of April, it's usually March 20th or something. But that was New Year on the perpetual Hebrew calendar. It's consecration in the year consecration uh, on the Enoch. It's 13 Temple, which is a resurrection day when Christ resurrected, and it's a quickening of the spirit on the uniform Mars. On the star calendar, it was one heart, which is one of the dragon stars, unified heart. And it was the North Star, which we're told is the guiding light for those seeking the direction of the priesthood. <coughs> so those are all, all important days that he starts. A month later, they go out and pray to know about the Aaronic priesthood. And they get the Aaronic priesthood on the day one priest of all things. There's, there's one of the 24 possibilities for a Saturday afternoon. They're all one priest. They're all one something on the priest calendar. But they're one priest on the priest calendar. And this they're going to receive the priesthood of, of the level of what's called a priest in the church, which will be started. I mean, that's huge in itself. It's, and see, the priest calendar is used for priesthood things, and so it doesn't show up a lot, because <coughs> there's only a few priesthood things. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, zero Lord on the Mars calendar. That'll be important when we get to the next one. 13 wind, it's summer, it's birth. John the Baptist appears to them and ordains them to the Aaronic priesthood, which has been, had lost, been lost. 455. Now, this is something that people have different opinions on. There's no question in most people's mind that Peter, James, and John appeared to Joseph and Oliver. Um, and the date is Sunday, the 31st of May. Uh, it, it was just before dawn, or before... It was at dawn <clears throat> on the day one creation on Mars. Now that completes a pattern. The Aaronic was on zero Lord on Mars. This is two weeks later. This is Sunday morning. The other was Saturday afternoon. And there's two weeks uh, between them. Or is it three weeks? It's two weeks. Um, and... It's first fruits on Enoch, it's trumpets, it's one condor. Condor is a higher priesthood. One condor is, is the, a higher priesthood than Aaronic. It's on Seer, which is a Joseph Smith day, and it's on King. Uh, now, it says in the Doctrine and Covenants that... Uh, they ordained them to be apostles of Jesus Christ. Uh, that was not in the original version of section 27. Uh, Denver Snuffer has pointed out that he, he took that verse out because it was written by an unknown hand. And he's trying to get the scriptures back to what Joseph Smith did. But Oliver Cowdery was told that he could write revelation in the books, but he was not to give commandments. And he was present at this. And I will suggest that the unknown hand was Oliver Cowdery's hand, and that they really were ordained to be apostles. But apostles are not in the highest priesthood, which Denver understands. They're going to get that later, and we'll have the next slide on that. So this is a priesthood we don't have a very good name for right now, and I call it the apostolic priesthood in my work. But this is what they needed to start the church because they were going to do an ordinance of laying on of hands 
and they were going to give blessings, which cannot be done with the lower Aaronic priesthood, does not bless. And so they had some more priesthood than they got from John, and John had promised that Peter, James, and John would come. So this is a little different than is taught by other people, but that's okay. Uh, so it was an amazing day. Now the next, oh, first the Book of Mormon comes out. Just uh, about 13 days after that, or but anyway, at this time, 25th of March, Thursday, the resurrected Book of Mormon was done, and we've talked about that, but it's also holy on other calendars. Uh, and it's especially on the, it's a big deal on the, Venus and Mercury calendar because this is the day on which the Savior resurrected. It was one resurrection and one Lord. So the Book of Mormon comes forth on a day that was like the day that Jesus came forth in the resurrection. And that's why I refer to this as the resurrection of the Book of Mormon. And now the church is organized, having enough priesthood to do that. On the day consecration, by the way, it's not a holy day on the Hebrew calendar. When, and for years, I was all upset that it just missed. It's like the Lord just missed an opportunity or something. But you know what? It's not a. It's not an Old Testament Hebrew calendar church. It's a new one which uses these higher calendars. The day the church is organized is on consecration on the Enoch, one heart on the uh, star, and Polaris. See, it's a year later. Oliver started on Tuesday, the 7th of April, 1829. 364 days after that is Tuesday, the 6th of April. See, one day less than a year, what we call a year. And so it had the same star, it has the same one heart. So that's one heart is like we're supposed to all be unified like Zion. Creation is a beginning day, and it's 13 deer, a holy day. So the church starts on a bunch of holy days, but not a holy day on the Hebrew calendar. Now, the Book of Mormon was written and hidden by Native Americans, and it was when it was the text restored. Okay, this is an amazing thing, and you got to look at this one on your own. I didn't even go over this. There's something called a Tracina calendar. This is the only use of it I know, and we didn't study it. But we did study Tracinas, and Tracinas are named for the first picture of the 13. And it turns out that the restoration, uh, uh, the Tracinas are in order, light, wind, temple, Creation, quickening, birth, evil, rebirth, death, and spirit. When was the death of the Book of Mormon? It's when the text was reburied. When it was the birth, when it was first unearthed. Joseph Smith was not allowed to lift the book out at first. Um, there's something official that it was born on this day. Uh, when he first gets it in 1827, immediately there's attempts to steal it. That's when evil entered its life. Then its rebirth is when it's translated, its burial is when it's given back, and the spirit which lasts, dear, is when the translation is published. So it's this Native American book, and it was all published and came forth on a Native American calendar, which hasn't been noticed elsewhere. The first preaching of the Church of Christ was on the Sunday after it was organized, um, I think Oliver Cowdery gave the first, they have Joseph Smith here, but he might have given the second, the first public. Anyway, uh, it was Oliver Cowdery gave it. But it was on Easter, on two calendars, and it was on the day of the net on the star calendar. That's when the net is, fishing net, is cast out by the ram to be fishers of men. It's a perfect star day. It's also first fruits, and on the priest calendar, it's gathered. So they're starting the gathering of the fish in the net and of Israel. Now we'll go to the higher priesthood. Melchizedek, high priests. 
were forced ordained on Saturday, the 4th of June, which is a decision day. Now, that's really important because these men had to make a decision of uh, what they're going to do with it. And most of them didn't do well, and a lot of them got excommunicated. So they're, they're ordained on a decision day. It was Passover year. That's capitalized, so that's a year on the Hebrew calendar. One king. Now, the high priest has to do with being a king and a priest. It's one king. And then the name in Hebrew is very similar. It's Mal, Malkijah, I think, priest of the Lord. On the priest calendar, it's the fullness. See, this is a fullness of the priesthood kind of thing. So the star is fullness, which is named fullness because it has to do with the fullness of the priesthood. And it's a dragon star day. And so... Uh, and they were all ordained, 23 men were ordained by the laying on of hands uh, to be high priests, high priests in the church. But they're given the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek is the priesthood they had. And then the church job name is high priest. Okay. Uh, oh, let's see. Oh, we're about to lose... Uh, we're about over on the, uh, our time. I've got to end it. Oh, no, excuse me. It's only been 30 minutes. We get 40 minutes, so we're okay. Joseph Smith, I'll get, I'll get signals when it's time. Joseph Smith arrived in Zion on Monday, the 1st of August, 1831. This Zion is down in Independence, Missouri. And uh, the day he arrives is a big day. It's one fullness. See, it's a fullness thing again on two different calendars. Uh, one birth on the Mercury, uh, quickening on Mars, and the and day of the whip. And so there you go. They had a conference in 1833, which was on Passover day in the Passover year. And again, it's on fishnet. Big day. Um, we go to the next slide. Uh, why is it my... I'm not my... I'm clicking. I got very slow response all of a sudden. Uh, they got the cornerstone of the Kirtland Temple is laid, you know, I'm going to go faster because we're going to have to uh, finish here. Let's see, it's seven. It's going to be 47. Okay, we still got five minutes. The <clears throat> cornerstone of the Kirtland Temple is laid on a holy day. This is important because two things happen. This is the very day they're being kicked out of Missouri. This is when they signed a paper saying, we will leave, Tuesday the 23rd. And on that same day, the cornerstone Hardy Pratt talks about their change in attitude. He said, we were commanded in his autobiography to build a temple in Missouri. And we didn't think it was important. And we didn't do it. And we got kicked out. And then there's a new commandment to be build a temple in Kirtland, Ohio. And guess what? They thought it was important. <laughs> And they laid that cornerstone. It happened to be on the very same day. And it was trumpets, midsummer, and Passover, and New Year, <coughs> and the bright star in the uh, herdsman. Um, so there you go. The first patriarch of the church. This is an amazing one in itself. Uh, he is ordained according to the traditional history. I've heard people question this. But the day stands out uh, because, yeah, it's a holy day on Hebrew and it's Easter and this and that. But the big thing is, is zero Lord on the Venus, similar to how all of the patriarchs before the great flood were ordained. In section 107 of the regular Doctrine and Covenants, uh, there's this big list of when all of the 
patriarchs before the flood were ordained, the years. And from the year, I was able to get the exact date of all of them. The, I had to figure out what the rule was, what they all had in common. Because <coughs> there's always a pattern. <coughs> and the rule was, they were all ordained on holy days on the Venus calendar. Now we come to our dispensation, we have our first patriarch, and guess what? And it's a day, it's like Wednesday. When I first saw it, I thought, well, couldn't they at least wait for church on Sunday or something, you know? It's Wednesday, and it was at the print shop. I mean, and all of a sudden, Joseph Smith just says, I think I'll, I'll give my dad a blessing here. And that's counted as the day he is ordained to be the patriarch of the church. It's a Wednesday. Well, it's not only holy on one, two, three, four calendars up there, but it matches the pattern of before the flood. All this stuff I find amazing. Twelve apostles were chosen, and I have their pictures. And it was on several, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holy days. That's really something for the Quorum of the Twelve. Um, okay, next slide, 1466, Temple Kirtland is de dedicated. That was a huge day. My first paper in the Ens in the Ensign magazine was about how this was the Easter Sunday most similar. And I don't even have that it was Easter Sunday. That's hilarious. It was, oh, I'm, I'm emphasizing the Pentecost. It, it, it was in flames. It looked like, I read once that the, a nearby town published in a newspaper that the Kirtland Temple burned down on the day of its dedication. And that's how bright the, it was engulfed in flames. It was the day of Pentecost on the first fruits calendar. And it, there were angels, tongues, and pillars of fire. But this is pillars of fire that other people could see in nearby towns. A week later, Jesus appeared in that temple. And it was Easter and first fruits. This is the date that was the most like Easter on three different calendars. First fruits gathered and foundation all on that. So that's slide 467 of the Kirtland Temple. Uh, okay, we have until, we have just a couple of minutes, and we're about going to make it. This, let's just say that it goes on. Let me stop if there's questions, because we got, like, time for one question. The cornerstone of the Nauvoo Temple, I'll just say, the uh, Joseph Smith, the senior, Hiram Smith, and Jess Samuel Smith are all important. We talked about Joseph Smith Sr. Lucy Mack Smith is very important. Uh, Sidney Rigdon was prophesied in the Book of Mormon to be the spokesman for Joseph Smith, and he was. How many people, and he was ordained as spokesman in the Doctrine and Covenants. So some people thought it's Oliver Cowdery or somebody else. The last slide is the death of Joseph Smith. It's on Raven Day, it's on several days, but it's on Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, the star in the dog, and he is the big dog that's chasing the wicked hare. And we're going to stop there and ask in one minute, uh, are there any questions? Yes, yes, I have a question on uh, the April 6, 1830, that was... Uh, specified in DC 20, but uh, that was written by Oliver Cowdery. I don't know if that was a Lord Tillman that it had to be on that. Was it more a, I don't oh, know. It says, they, they were told it had to be on that day. It, it okay. says, it says in the, uh, right in the introduction, uh, I don't know what you're saying, Oliver Cowdery. He, uh, he and Oliver wrote that section. You can tell that because it says, we the elders, it's not in first person by the Lord. So he, Oliver and Joseph wrote it, and Oliver probably penned it because he's the school teacher. But it says in the church history before that, the Lord showed us the exact day on which we should start the church. Okay. It was not a random day. It was revealed. Okay. Well, I'm going to close it off because it's time. And so it's been a great class. Oh, there's a bunch of new stuff coming out. Read my new papers. We didn't have time to talk about that, but we got this done. 
A lot of new stuff coming out, and I'll probably be adding slides to this tutorial at some point so that there's 500 instead of 474. But anyway, uh, thanks for everybody being here, and hope you enjoyed it. And we're going to we're going to sign out. Thank you. Thank you.